So now it's time for us to look at our big picture question. Everybody say big picture. Big picture. Say question. question. Now say it together. Big picture question. Big picture. Very good. So what did Jesus do to save us? That's our big picture question. And our answer is Jesus lived a what? Sinless life died on the cross and rose from the dead. Now, let's let's look at this big picture question for a little bit because each part of that answer is super duper important. See, if Jesus had not lived a perfect life so that he, he didn't sin at all, if Jesus had not lived a perfect life, then his death couldn't have paid for our sins. See, we need someone to pay for our sins. Jesus was the payment when he died on the cross, he sacrificed himself for our sins to be forgiven. And so he had to live a perfect life though. The only person that could sacrifice himself and pay for the sin would have to live an absolutely perfect life. And the problem is that other than Jesus, there's no other human being on earth who's ever lived that has ever lived a perfect life. It's only Jesus Christ, right? Jesus is perfect. So that's the first part. But then had Jesus not died, because it says died on the cross, had Jesus not died, then the punishment for our sins would still fall on us. What that means is that we would be punished for our sins when we die. Guys, believe me, you do not want to have to face punishment for your sins. That is a bad, bad situation. Okay, that would mean separation from God for all eternity. That would mean that when we leave this earth, when we die, that we would not be with God in heaven. All right, and we would pay for our sins. This is a big deal, right? But because of what Jesus did, and because He died on the cross, He was the He paid the price for our sins. So He took the punishment for you. Jesus took the punishment for you and for me. Okay. Now, then the third part of this is that. Um, had Jesus stayed dead, because it says, and rose from the dead, right? So it's important that he didn't stay in the grave, right? Had Jesus stayed dead, then we would have no hope of eternal life with God. That's super bad too. But Jesus, he did all three of these things. And so he saved us from our sin and from being punished for our sin, he saved us from death. Because now, if we trust in Jesus, then yes, we're still going to die here on earth, but then we get to go be with God in heaven. For all eternity, we get to be with God. So we're here on earth, and then when we die, it's like, whoop, there we are. We are with the one true God. That is awesome sauce, right? So Jesus is God's son. He came to earth as a human. He was a baby. He grew up. When he was an adult, he traveled throughout Israel teaching about God and God's kingdom. Now, Jesus performed miracles, he healed people, he even raised people from the dead. Jesus actually raised people from the dead. It's amazing. So, Jesus' ministry made, uh, made him very popular. All the common people, all the regular people in Israel, man, they were like, dude, Jesus is awesome, man. This is great. But there were a group of people that didn't like Jesus very much. They, As a matter of fact, they hated Jesus. They didn't believe he was the Savior. And they were jealous of all the attention that he was getting. So even though there were the regular people loved Jesus and his message, the religious people, they didn't like him at all. Now, last week we started this new unit, looking at this big picture question. And what's interesting about this unit that we're in right now is that we are looking at Holy Week. So if you're thinking about Jesus's life, then what we're looking at right now in the Bible is the week that leads up to Jesus being crucified on the cross, okay, for dying for our sins. So we're looking at that week. And so last week, we talked about that first day of the Holy Week of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, a donkey right? So people welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem as their king. And this is the reason they did this. Because if you were alive back then when Jesus was riding in on a donkey, if you were an Israelite, if you were Jewish, and that Jesus was an Israelite, he was Jewish. And so you had heard about a prophecy all your life. If you were alive back then and you were Israelite, you heard about this prophecy of a Savior coming in and riding in on a donkey. So the people um, in Jerusalem were like, 
whoa, wait a minute. I've heard about this story all my life, and then I've heard stuff that this guy does. Jesus, I heard all the miracles he does, man. All way. This is the this is our king. This, this guy's gonna come in, he's gonna set up a kingdom, and he's gonna kick the Romans' tails, and, and he's gonna save us. This is gonna be great. So they were cheering him on, right? So some people in the crowd understood that they were looking at the Savior. Very few. Most people thought, oh, this is gonna be our king. He's gonna he's gonna set up a kingdom, build up a big army. And Jesus wasn't about all that. He was going to be a, a better king than that. He had more important things to deal with than just setting up a kingdom and building an army and, and beating up the Romans and all that kind of stuff. He was here to save the world. So this week, what we're going to talk about is after that happened. So after Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, we're going to look at what some of those religious leaders were doing, right? Right. Because they were, they were smart guys. These were, these were people that studied scripture and they, they thought they knew it better than anybody else. And they thought they were better than everybody, right? And so they didn't like Jesus. And so they were going to try to get him in trouble. The religious people, that was their number one goal is to get him in trouble. Either turn the Israelites against him or tattle on him to Rome to get him arrested. All right. So that's what we're going to pick up today. Religious leaders heard Jesus teaching in Jerusalem, and they decided to ask tricky questions to catch him saying something wrong. They sent men to Jesus. The men said, Teacher, we know you tell the truth. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus knew what they were doing. Why are you trying to trick me? He asked. Show me the coin you used to pay the taxes. The men brought him a denarius. Jesus asked, Whose picture is on the coin? Whose name is on it? Caesar's, they answered. Jesus said, Then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what belongs to God. The men were amazed oh, yeah. at what Jesus said, and they went away. Later, the religious leaders came to question Jesus again. Teacher, which command in the law is the greatest? They asked. Jesus answered, Love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second most important command is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. A man said to Jesus, that's right. To love God and your neighbor as yourself is far more important than offerings and sacrifices. The man answered wisely and Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Then Jesus asked the religious leaders a question. Whose son is the Messiah? David's, they said. How can that be? Jesus asked. David called the Messiah Lord. Why would he do that if the Messiah is his son? The religious leaders did not know what to say. Their plan had failed, and no one was brave enough to ask him any more questions. When the religious leaders questioned Jesus, he answered with wisdom and power. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. He is the Word of God, who came to show us exactly what God is like. Jesus had authority in heaven and on earth. All right, so here we go. I don't know about you guys, but had I been asked those questions, they would have tripped me up. I would have been like, I don't really know how to answer that. Because again, the religious leaders were asking these questions to try to get Jesus in trouble. So they didn't believe he was the Savior, and they were trying to get him in trouble. But here's the good thing, guys. Jesus spoke with wisdom and authority. And you know what? A lot of times we, we, think, about the, we think about all the miracles and all the good things that we should be thinking about that Jesus did. But sometimes we just need to think about how smart and wise and amazing and how much authority that Jesus has. He is the King of Kings. Now, he is God. So Jesus spoke with wisdom and authority. So the questions they asked were about things that could easily cause trouble for Jesus had he not been perfectly wise. Jesus is perfectly wise. See, taxes, they were asking about taxes. Taxes are the money that governments charge people to pay for things like roads and armies and schools and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, truth be told, nobody really likes paying taxes, right? When I get a paycheck, a portion of my check goes to pay taxes, right? I don't like paying taxes, but you know who really didn't like paying taxes? The Israelites. So the Israelites in Jesus' day, 
they didn't like paying taxes, especially because it wasn't the Israelite government that was taxing them. It was Rome. Everybody say Rome. So Rome was an enemy living in their land. And the Jews paid them taxes. So the religious leaders, they knew this. And they were like, oh, we can, we can, we can get them in trouble here, guys. This is the question we need to ask them. So the, the religious leaders were hoping that Jesus would say one of two wrong things. If Jesus had said, yes, it's good to pay taxes to Caesar, then the religious leaders would have accused Jesus of being an enemy of God and God's people. But if Jesus had said, no, we should not pay taxes, then they would have tattled on Jesus. They would have gone to the Roman government and said, hey, he's telling people not to pay taxes. You need to arrest them. But the thing is, Jesus, his answer was perfect because he's all wise and he's all knowing. He showed that governments do have the right to charge for taxes. But we all, get this, we all have a responsibility to live generously, to live giving lives toward God and his people. No matter what question they ask, Jesus had the answer. But then, check this out. When Jesus finally asked a question of his own, the religious leaders saw that they weren't as smart as they thought they were. Jesus was showing them, you guys think you know scripture, but like, hey, uh, I kind of wrote scripture, all right? So I kind of know a little bit more than you do, okay? So he was trying to show them the truth about scripture. The religious leaders thought they understood. They really didn't understand. But so what Jesus was trying to show them when he was asking his question is he was trying to teach them that the Messiah, the Savior, is both the son of David, because Jesus was a descendant of David. He came from that family line. And he's also the son of God because he was born to Mary alone, and God is his true father. So here's, here's the wrapping up point. When the religious leaders questioned Jesus, he answered with wisdom and with power. Jesus is the Messiah, guys. He is the Son of God. He is the Word of God who came to show us exactly what God is like. And Jesus has authority in heaven and on earth. And that's the reason I like it. I like this bottom line for today because Jesus spoke with wisdom and authority. My Jesus is all wise. He's all knowing. And he is the King of Kings. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Micah from Clayton, North Carolina asks, Why did the religious leaders hate Jesus so much? Didn't they realize he was there to help? Yeah, Micah, the problem with the religious leaders of Jesus' day was that they felt threatened by him. Uh, they felt that their power, their authority over the people was going to be questioned or undermined by Jesus, and he was going to take that away from them. And that's really why they pushed back on him. That's the main reason. Some of it also is they, they, you know, Jesus was not exactly who they thought he would be. Uh, they were expecting a, a Messiah who would be a political rescuer. And so that caused them trouble. Uh, when Jesus was presenting himself as being one with God, that caused them trouble as well. But really, when you get down to it, for those leaders, it was all about their power, their authority. And you know what? We have to be careful because we can be guilty of the same thing as well. Now, we're not, we don't have power over a whole people like they did, but we don't want to give authority and power of our own lives to God at times. That's why we sin. We want to do things our way, not God's way. So when we look at the religious leaders in Jesus' day, we can't look at them as being way external, way apart from us. Like, man, we can never relate with them. No, we do need to relate with them because we can have the same heart in us. And so we need to learn from this. We can be just as rebellious in different ways because we want authority. And that's what being a follower of Jesus is all about. It's about recognizing that He is our true authority and we want to yield to Him, give Him control of our lives and do what He desires with joy and gratitude for what He's done by giving us life from death. So here's a question back for you. How can you show love to people who reject Jesus?